So, how was your week? We ask because no matter how stressful it has been, no matter how frustrated you are about things at work, you probably had a better week than President Trump. Think about it. Did the feds raid your lawyer's office this week and this home? Did one of your former employees write a tell-all book likening you to a mob boss before telling the world that you are unethical and untethered to the truth? And FYI, there are unsubstantiated reports about you and Russian hookers in Moscow doing some far out stuff. Yes, it's seven o'clock and this is a family show. But did uh, you really tell your top rival that the package is in the mail and they're nice and they're new and they're smart, only to have one of your staffers put the brakes on? And the Speaker of the House quit this week. Joining us for more are Cheryl Wilson, the chairwoman of the Manatee Democratic Party, State Senator Greg Stubbe, and Mitch Perry of WMNF Radio. So I'm wondering what you your take is everyone on what happened today. We expected that the former FBI director's uh, book came out. And Greg, he, there's a lot of salacious stuff out there and I realize that, but one of the key things that uh, the former FBI director said to ABC this morning was about the night that he and other members of the intelligence community informed the president-elect about the Russian interference. And this is what Mr. Comey said. Then the conversation, to my surprise, moved into a PR conversation about how the Trump team would position this and what they could say about this. No one, to my recollection, asked, so what, what's coming next from the Russians? You know, a lot of Republicans and Democrats take issue with Comey, but I want to ask you about that because it has been talked about over and over again that the president really has not done anything or directed the government in any way to find out how to stop the Russians from doing this again. Well, you opened up a lot of different issues there, but first with Comey, I mean, it's kind of interesting that his book has just come out and now he's suddenly back in the press and saying all these salacious things about folks and things that are in his book. I mean, to me, it seems like more of an act to try to sell books that he's just recently authored than anything else. And, um, you know, it's, I think Trump has reacted in the way that Trump reacts to these type of accusations. And um, with, with the investigations, even Congressman Rooney said that the House should stop their investigation on the House side. You've got three different investigations going on, and um, you've got to let the investigations play themselves out. What I mean in, in terms, and you're going to be on the ballot in November, what has the government done to stop the Russians from interfering in the election process like they did in 2016? Well, I don't know if there's proof of what they did other than the Facebook involving in that, and the government doesn't have anything to do with that. I, I think Congress has been investigating that, but just like anything that Congress does, it takes a significant amount of time for them to get to any position to make a decision on things, and then when they try to make a decision on things, sometimes they have challenges getting through the process and getting a bill passed that addresses whatever the specific issue is. I, I, I have to come in here because I don't think there's any form or any level of government that doesn't acknowledge that there was Russian interference in the 2016 election other than the President of the United States. The FBI, the intelligence agencies, both houses of Congress, uh, the general public, investigators have all concluded that there was in, a, a, an attempt by the Russian government to influence our election. The only guy that denies that is Donald Trump. Right, and I think that's what you're showing with this clip. I mean, Comey has said a lot of stuff that's coming out in the book that comes out next week, but the point about Russia and about Trump not seeming to be alarmed has been the underlying issue about why people think that there might be something there, whether it's actually, you know, that's what the whole Mueller investigation, of course, is about, is whether there's quote-unquote collusion going on. Uh, what the, uh, the, the clip shows is Comey was surprised, apparently, when he was talking about this with, with President Trump, that Trump wasn't very alarmed by it. And that goes into this whole theory about what's going on between him and the Russians. Cheryl, I, we only have a few seconds left here, but would the, Mr. Comey have been better off not bringing up all the other salacious stuff to make his point about his concerns about the president? Uh, for salaciousness, yes, but apparently it is considered um, somewhat suspicious and um, maybe what is motivating Trump to stay so secretive and so combative. Um, the details are disgusting. But if they are so disgusting that 
people don't want them known and don't want them heard, then that's motivation yeah, for someone else. You don't know if any of this is true or not. Of course I mean, we don't. There's, there's no don't. evidence. That's, that's, that's why there's an investigation. We've we got this new website, lioncomey.com, with the Republicans have put out, and it's got quotes from all Democrats. You know, uh, Bernie Sanders, Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. So we've got... Yeah, not here to uh, defend Jim Cody. Obviously, okay. <laughs> we are just getting warmed up, and we'll have much more in the week in Washington right after we check the first alert weather, so stay with us. Welcome back. We're talking about the week in Washington, and joining us for more are Cheryl Wilson, the chairwoman of the Manatee Democratic Party, State Senator Greg Stubbe, and Mitch Perry of WMNF Radio. We have nine and a half minutes and a lot of news to, uh, to get across. And number one is the status of the Mueller investigation. On one hand, the Deputy Attorney General, which is overseeing the investigation, is telling confidence that he is getting prepared to be fired by the president. At the same time, a new Washington Post ABC News poll comes, comes out and says 69% of Americans support the special counsel's investigation. Going further, Americans by 64 to 32% support him also investigating Trump's business activities and 58% of Americans support investigations that go into different directions. Are, are, is the president playing with fire here? Well, I, I don't know really where to start. I mean, the, the, I say let the investigations play out. I mean, Congressman Rooney just recently, when he left, he was so frustrated with the way the Intelligence Committee was handling their investigation in the House that he, he publicly said the, the investigation needs to end. So what, what would your reaction be if the President fires the assistant, uh, the Deputy Attorney General or Special Counsel Mueller? I think he has the ability to do it. He's the President. So um, I, he certainly has that, but he's going to have to weigh that decision and how that's going to impact the ongoing investigation. I mean, just let the investigation play right. out and, it, and see how that... It would be politically calamitous if you fired um, uh, Robert Miller. I, I think, you know, it'd be re going back to the Saturday Night Massacre back in 1973 with Nixon. Um, interesting about this, 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 this break into Michael Cohen's, uh, like, not, I guess all of his offices, not just his one office, right, uh, which, you know, the president was outraged by and, and others were as well. They thought this is a, you know, violation of attorney uh, client privilege. Um, Michael Cohen seems to be in serious trouble. Uh, and the question is, you know, is, is this a, a means to make him talk? Interesting that Mueller himself did not, you know, do this, right? His Justice Department, it was the uh, U.S. Attorney uh, District, Southern District of New York, which means you know, it's impossible to know what's going on here, but that maybe it has nothing to do with directly with Mueller, but he had some evidence there and said, you guys take care of this. And I want to get to that more, yeah. but how do you know it's going to be a constitutional crisis, or are people just going to revert to their predisposed Well, because you're hearing Republicans even say, I think there's been actually a few Republicans who said they would sign on to this bill, uh, Tom Tillis of North Carolina, Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, Democrats were trying to push this bill that, that, that would make it much harder to fire Robert Mueller. So you're, you're hearing that for the first time. I mean, you know, where some Republicans are coming on saying this would be a real problem. That's why I'm saying constitutional crisis. I think if, if you have Republicans now who are saying, don't do that, Mr. President, I think that's where it becomes where it's not just a partisan issue anymore. And you read the numbers. You see what the public perception is. Most of the American people want to see it play out. They want to know what's going on. It can't be going on that much longer. We're, we're coming up to a year now. I think in next month well, is a year. I think you're way outside the scope of what the initial investigation was yeah, in. But Mueller didn't do the break in right. to to um, the attorney to Cohen's. But it, but it just it has echoes. He, I do he found, we're, we're, uh, Ken Starr though. He you found know cause. when you're looking down, maybe it's the Stormy Daniels, Karen McDougal thing. Again, maybe we don't really know what they're going to f looking for with Michael Cohen because he's he's got a lot of communications with, with Donald Trump over the years as his fixer, right? So we're not really sure what it is. But it, but to some, it looks like it's a it's a replay of Ken Starr, which a lot of Democrats had big issues with when Whitewater went into Monica Lewinsky, you know, and, 20 and years ago. Don't you think that you can draw a comparison with what we were talking about with Comey in the 2016 election? I would think that Mueller probably has enough foresight to to think about. Does he want his results to come out right before the 2018 election? Does he want to be putting himself in that same position that, that Comey was in? And all of this is happening as the United States is debating whether or not to launch missiles on Syria because of Syria's alleged use of chemical weapons earlier this, this week. Um, and I can't help but um, think about the, the tweet that the president put out earlier this week, and I think we have it on the screen here, Russia vows to shoot down any and all missiles filed at, fired at Syria. Get ready, R Russia, because they will be coming nice and new and smart. You shouldn't be partners with a gas-killing animal who kills his people and enjoys it. And it seems like he was telegraphing to Russia, 
that we're getting ready to launch these missiles, even what direction they're coming from, because smart missiles can only come from the Mediterranean or, um, or, or Turkey. On the other hand, today, the UN Ambassador Nikki Haley said this. Our president has not yet made a decision about possible actions in Syria. But should the United States and our allies decide to act in Syria, it will be in defense of a principle on which we all agree. Well, you could agree with that, but uh, uh, Greg, I, how many times during this campaign did we say that, you know, see the president uh, basically castigate Obama and Bush before him for, for saying exactly what we're going to do, when we're going to attack, when we're going to pull out, and so forth? I, I think a lot of the Obama administration has set a lot of this stuff up by giving millions and billions of dollars to Iran, and you can't sit back and watch a tyrannical government kill its own people and not do anything. Having been a veteran and served in that region in Operation Iraqi Freedom and seeing the type of things that you deal with over there, Israel has already fired off rockets in defense. I mean, you have our biggest ally in the region but defending that, themselves, and the we have to stand behind that's them. That's not the question. The question is telegraphing exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to do well, it. How after. do you know he's but, telegraphing but, it? He may but, be saying something to get them to think he's going one direction and he's going to come a completely different we, direction. But we've seen Donald Trump for 14 or 15 months now. We know that he <laughs> goes back and forth. Yes, he, he said many times in the campaign that he wouldn't say what he was going to do. But that was last Tuesday. Today's Friday. So um, the, the question is more the, the lack of a uh, comprehensive strategy, the lack of a plan, the lack of communication with people who, who are there to advise him. It's the uh, spur of the moment attitude of Donald Trump. What you didn't show there, with Nikki Haley also said today that there's reports of 50 chemical attacks by uh, Syria. That's the first time I've heard of that. And whether it was during the Obama administration or during the Trump administration, I, I, I'm kind of just perplexed by that. That, that, that that's, if they, they say that's happened. Now, by the way, not only does um, Syria deny this, but Russia is, came out today, I don't know if you saw this, and is blaming the UK, believe it or not, which is, you know, UK, of course, says this is nuts. But the point being, Russia, we're really getting kind of get into this kind of old Cold War thing going on now where Russia is, is, making, is blaming an ally of us on this situation. It's getting really kind of uh, clouded over there. Meanwhile, Republicans are trying to shore up deep red uh, districts and seats after Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, announced that he will not seek re-election, which really, I mean, while people expected it, it does basically underscore how difficult uh, this election cycle, the midterms are going to be for Republicans. Greg, you're running in a, a deeply red congressional district, but are you concerned what is setting up to be what many people talk about is a blue wave? I, I think people like myself are going to work very hard to make sure that Nancy Pelosi is not the Speaker of the House. And, and when I get through the race that I have in, in the primary, I'll be helping other members to try to get elected and make sure that we keep our seats in the House. Uh, I, I think you have to applaud Speaker Ryan for deciding to be and spend more time with his family. That was one of the reasons that he, that he gave, and that's something that's very admirable. And you're seeing a lot of different members leave for different reasons. I mean, I, I, when I spoke to Rooney, he, he cited family and not being able to see his high school uh, son play football or, or baseball. could it be that uh, he knows it will not be a whole lot of fun of being a Republican in the minority should the Democrats take over? I, well, not in a dis I mean, I, I don't think that anybody has a crystal ball as to what's going to happen. And I, I certainly am going to work very hard to make sure that the Democrats don't take the House. And he's in a district, and this district that I'm running for is a very red, I mean, this district voted for Trump by 27 you know, points. Ryan is just the biggest and the brightest. There are all kinds of other members of Congress that are stepping down as well, and probably for the reason you're talking Cheryl, about. Cheryl, the question I wanted to ask you is, I still do not see what the message of the Democratic Party is going into the midterms other than, you know, sitting back and letting the president go through what he is going through. What's the economic message out there to win back working families that the Democrats have lost for the last decade? Well, right now we, we are sitting and we're watching what's happening and we, we see the impact of uh, what the Trump administration, what the Rick Scott administration have had on people economically. Um, you know, if, if you look at the graphs of the job creation, it's down under 
uh, Donald Trump and it's down under Rick Scott. There are a lot of things that have, have uh, been claimed by the Republican candidates that simply isn't the case. But the Democrats are working to get into the position where they can make a difference. And we all know what the Democratic Party stands for. We stand for the middle class. We stand for the working people. We stand for a minimum wage that is a livable wage. We stand for housing. We stand for health care. We stand for education. We stand for a good environment. All right. We have to take a quick Got break it? and we'll be back for final <laughs> thoughts yeah. in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs> and our guest joining us right now for final thoughts. And Mitch, I'll start with you because you had the speaker leave this week. Um, you have Vern Buchanan here in the 16th being targeted by the Democrats. But do you get a sense when you look at the entire area that we live in, whether that wave is coming here or is it really the question still out? The question's still out. It's, it's even question out here. As we were talking, Vern Buchanan is spending more money now than he ever has this early on to worry about a Democratic opponent. Uh, and that makes some sense, though. This is a district that perhaps could get a little closer than it normally is. Um, we mentioned, and, and, but any other districts? No. And Dennis Ross, you dropped out, of course, in, in the Polk County area this week. That was big news because that was just really unexpected, and that was considered a pretty safe district, even though there's a lot of Democratic energy. And all of a sudden, Democrats feel like, whoa, we may have a chance here, perhaps, because it, even though as experts say it's still pretty solid R. Um, going back to what you asked, uh, Cheryl, about, about the, um, the Democratic message. No, I think you're right, Alan. It's pretty much, you know, let it all play out. The Republicans, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of negative energy basically going on with Donald Trump right now. Democrats haven't had really had to do anything, and it's very early. The question is, are they peaking right now in, in uh, April? Greg, let me ask you this question, because if you've looked at Vern Buchanan's commercials, the headline in those commercials are, I'm independent. He seems to be distancing himself, and he has been for a long time, from President Trump. Does that work for you? Do you need to do the same thing, or are you riding uh, the Trump train uh, all the look, way? Unemployment is a, is a historic all-time lows. African American unemployment is historic all-time lows, and it's because of the policies that Trump had in cutting taxes, cutting regulations, and getting people back to work and government out of people's you lives. Know, Bob Corker from Tennessee, who is retiring or stepping down from his Senate seat, said yesterday that the tax bill may be his biggest regret of having been in, in his time in the Senate. So we, we still have some time for the reality and the realization to set in with what that tax bill is going to do to the middle class worker and the middle, the middle class families. Uh, Vern Buchanan has no way to defend that. Okay, uh, FYI, we're going to have to wrap up the discussion we could go on for another hour but uh, you can watch past discussions on demand they're available on apple tv amazon fire and roku we want to thank our guests for being here tonight cheryl wilson the sh chairwoman of the manatee democratic party state senator greg Stubbe, and mitch perry of wmnf radio